Hello everyone. I'll be sharing with you what I learned today, the 4th of May, 2020. Okay, so let's start. The first Bible plan I read is titled, Let Go and Breathe. It's easy to forget that we are not in charge of the universe. How to deal with anxiety. Relinquish control. To bend the knee and admit to God that we are trying to manage life on our own. To admit this doesn't imply that we shrink from our responsibilities. Rather, to admit we are not in control allows us to remember who it was that brought us from death to life in Christ, from death to death, and causes us to realign ourselves with the reality that he is actually in control of this world. Take deep breaths. Breaths. I can't pronounce TH, man. The fight or flight mechanism that keeps you from harm triggers when you feel like you're under threat. Once this happens, your breathing becomes shallow or you unknowingly stop breathing altogether. Deep breathing increases the supply of oxygen to your brain and stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system which promotes a state of calmness. Breathing techniques also help you feel connected to your body. It brings your awareness away from the worries in your head and quietens your mind. It reminds me of uh, the anime Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Can't pronounce TH man. I think cause the braces obstruct my tongue. I don't know why. Anyways, uh what I get out of today's plan is when you feel anxious, remember that God has given the given us the ability to take deep breaths to combat our feelings of anxiety and hopelessness. So breathe in deeply and that will help you to, I guess, cope with all these emotions running through your mind. Okay. And so I would like to close this Bible plan with a prayer. In your Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, thank you for every person finishing this devotional journey. Thank you for giving them the strength to make it to the end, especially those who were afraid they would give up and not make it this far. I pray that you will continue to open eyes by your Spirit so that each of us can see Jesus more clearly. I ask that you, you, would, give a, you would give each person the faith they need to take the ne next step in your power. You have broken every chain that binds us. Give us the grace, the grace to clothe ourselves in the light of your truth and love. Jesus, we confess that you are Lord of all. Be praised in us as we cling to you and walk free from anxiety. Amen. Your Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, the second Bible plan is titled At Hope's End. Or rather, At Hope's End, Rely on God's Word. How do you know when hope has died in your life? You start using the word never. <clears throat> For example, uh, I'll never get through this. I'll never be able to score this grade. I'll never be able to apologize to so-and-so. I'll never be able to get over this breakup. I'll never get rid of this void, this feeling of emptiness in my life. I'll never truly lose all this weight I'm carrying. And when you use the word never, that's when hope has died. When you, are at a, when you are at a dead end, you need the Bible. Read it, study it, memorize it, think, think about it. 
write it down and go over it. The Bible is full of promises. You rely on the word and trust in its promises and it will revive you emotionally. Nothing else is going to encourage you like the Bible. When you rely on the word of God, you don't panic because you are reminded that even though something is out of your control, it is not out of God's control. A dead end is a test of your faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, While God was testing him, Abraham still trusted in God and his promises, and so he offered up his son Isaac. God said he wanted Abraham to sacrifice his son, and Abraham didn't blink an eye. He didn't panic, because he remembered what God could do, and he relied on what God had promised him. What happens when God takes your most precious dream and wants you to give it up? Can you do that in faith? You are at a dead end, and God's going to deliver you if you give the right answer. And so I guess the story of Abraham and his son Isaac goes a bit like this. Abraham had this dream to build, or rather to be the father of many nations. In, in other words, to build <clears throat> an empire under him of people. And of course, this can only be fulfilled through his offspring. And his wife Sarah was barren until... Is his wife Sarah? I don't know. Anyway, his wife was barren until the age, or, or rather until he was about 90-something. And that's when his son Isaac was born. And so one day, God asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac up as a sacrifice. And that's crazy, right? Imagine God telling you to, to murder your own kid in future, or if you have a kid, then murder, murder him. Especially if he's your only son, you know? Only, kid, only child. And so, without thinking twice, Abraham blindfolded Isaac, brought him up a mountain, and was almost going to bring, bring the knife down, bring a knife down on Isaac's throat before God stopped him and asked him to sacrifice a lamb instead. And I think <clears throat> this was a true test of faith. And ultimately, what, what Abraham exemplifies here is great faith. He truly trusts that God has a greater plan for him and even went to the extent of sacrificing his own plans <clears throat> completely just because he, trust, he trusted in God's plan for him so much. Yeah, and I made a short prayer about it. So let me share it with you. You know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God, give me the courage to be like Abraham. Help me to grow to the point where I can willingly sacrifice all of my worldly dreams and desires to follow you. Just as how Abraham was willing to sacrifice not only his only son Isaac, but also his dream of becoming the father of many nations, just in accordance to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, I, what I took away from this plan is, I guess, a role model in Abraham. I aspire to have a faith as great as his. And I'll keep working at it. Maybe one day I'll get there. Thanks for watching. Peace.